When I was new to editing with Final Cut Pro, one of the things I found very frustrating was the initial interactions I had with the project and with the timeline down here. I just couldn't really understand or grasp what I was looking at. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at the timeline in much greater detail as far as just navigating and getting around your timeline because this is something that is frustrating for a lot of new editors. And the more you can practice playing your project and navigating, looking at it at different ways, the more of an understanding you're going to have and the easier time you're going to have as an editor. So the first thing I want to show is how you actually play your project. And that really has to do with your playhead here, which is this little line, this white line going down the interface. And then there's kind of this red or orange looking skimmer as well. So these are, are two very different areas of Final Cut, but something that's very powerful. So the first thing is how do you move this playhead? Well, all those little tick marks at the top, you can just click anywhere and it'll jump the playhead to that spot in your project. You can also click and drag at the top to move the playhead anywhere you want. And the playhead is gonna tell you what you're seeing up here in the viewer. So when, you're, when your timeline is active, which we know it is because of this little blue bar that goes across the entire um, timeline area, when the timeline is active, the playhead is gonna be this frame. So right here, we're at eight minutes, 30 seconds, and 20 frames. And that's because the playhead is right there. So that's what this frame looks like. So if you want to change to a different spot of your project, just click and drag that playhead to a different spot. You can see our time code down here underneath the viewer is changing, letting us know now our playhead is at three minutes, 20 seconds, and nine frames, which is this frame right here that we're seeing. Okay, pretty straightforward. You're just moving this across to a different area. If you actually want to play back your project, just hit the space bar and that will start playing the project from the playhead location where it is right now. So I'm just going to hit the space bar and we can see it's really? playing back the project. Notice the time code here underneath the viewer is changing to let us know where we're at. We can see the red playhead is moving across the project. Now, just like you did in the browser before when we were navigating clips, you can certainly use your J, K, and L keys to navigate and change the playback. So if you want to rewind a little bit, just hit the J key a couple times. And notice the playhead's going backwards. The more times I hit it, the faster it goes. If I hit K, it's going to pause at whatever frame it's at. And I could hit the space bar to start playing again. Or if I want to fast forward, I'm going to hit the L key a couple times. And now that's fast forwarding through the project. So that's how you can navigate around this view. You might have noticed then the skimmer as well. And this is kind of cool because you can skim across the project very quickly just by dragging left and right. I'm not clicking anything. I'm just essentially moving the mouse to the left or to the right. And when you skim across the project, that's another way to very quickly jump to different spots. And when you hit the space bar with the skimmer going, it's going to jump the playhead to that moment in time and start playing from that point. Just let loose and have so if we want to quickly fun, rewind right? and go back to a different area, I'm going to hit the space bar to pause the project. My skimmer comes back, and I can skim up maybe to this third clip, hit the space bar, and then start playing back from that location. So again, we have the playhead and the skimmer, and that allows us to navigate around and play back from a specific spot. So there might be something different with your machine. You might not be seeing a skimmer, and there might be some other things that don't look exactly the way it does on my machine here. And that's a great thing to call out because we do have some controls here on the right side of the toolbar that actually allow you to enable and disable some of these features. So we're going to start on the left side and work our way across. This first button on the left side allows us to enable or disable video and audio skimming. So I can just click on this button 
And now skimming is disabled, which means if I drag across my mouse, notice nothing's happening because skimming is turned off. Some people don't like skimming, and you can turn that off. And then everything is based on where this playhead is. The playhead is going to determine where you're at uh, as opposed to skimming across the clip. Especially if you're working on an, either an older machine or a slower Mac, skimming might not work as well as it is on my machine here. So that's something that you can disable or enable. Uh, me personally, I usually keep skimming enabled. So I'll click on it so it's blue. Now, just another thing, just like the tools and anything else you can see in the little tool tip that pops up, S is the shortcut to enable or disable skimming. So it's very easy to accidentally press the S key and enable or disable skimming. Not a big deal. Just click on this little button here or press S again and you'll enable it. In a very similar fashion, next to it we have audio skimming, which you can turn on or off. The shortcut is Shift S to do that. Uh, audio skimming, in my opinion, is a little bit more annoying than helpful. So I actually usually keep audio skimming turned off. That way, when I'm skimming around the project, it's not giving me a whole bunch of feedback in terms of audio that might be a little bit more annoying. Uh, some people do like to have that turned on. You can do whatever you want. Obviously, these are all settings that you can disable or enable. They're right here on the toolbar because a lot of people do enable them and disable them frequently. So don't think you have to always keep audio skimming off. You might want to enable that when you are working with the audio and disable it when you're not. So that's those first two buttons. The next one over is something that can actually cause a lot of problems if you don't know this feature exists. And that's the ability to solo an item. Shortcut is Option S, but when you have something selected, if you do Option S or go up and click on the little solo button here, what you'll notice is only this clip is blue. The rest of them are kind of grayed out. And what's actually happened is it's soloing or playing only the selected clip. Think of going to a Just musical. A You're watching fun. all of these performers on stage. When one person stands out and sings, they might have a solo where they're the only ones singing. That's exactly what this solo feature is doing with the selected clips. It's going through and you're only going to hear or see this clip. The rest of them will be silent. Why would you want to do that? Well, if you have a whole project that's built with music, multiple clips, sound effects, many different things happening, you may not want to see or hear all of that extra noise and you want to just focus on one clip. So that's why you would go through and solo a clip. However, if you accidentally slow a clip and you're not hearing everything else, uh, that can be a problem. So just check and click on this button to unsolo whatever selected, and you'll just go back to your normal, normal playback. Okay, so that's solo. The next one is snapping, which is, uh, in my opinion, a very helpful feature. Uh, right now it's turned off. So notice as I drag the playhead across all of these clips, notice it's a very smooth motion because snapping is turned off. When snapping is turned on, the shortcut is N, by the way, uh, N for nap. Uh, when you are using snapping, your playhead and anything else that you're dragging around will actually jump and snap or link to those edit points. So notice it's not no longer a smooth motion as I'm dragging across. Anytime I get near an edit point in between two clips, the playhead jumps to those points. So in many cases, you will want snapping turned on because you want to link things to other clips and you want to be very specific. So in, for me, in, in the majority of my editing, I do have snapping enabled, and that's what that little button is for. However, N is another shortcut that's a great one to know to enable or disable snapping at any point. Okay, so we've seen these controls, which are really important. But the next one is one that should be a little bit familiar because we've seen it up here in the browser. This one is our, our clip appearance uh, menu. And in this case, it's also our timeline appearance menu. So all of these options are ways for you to customize the view of your timeline. In an earlier video, video we used command and the minus key to zoom out of the timeline. And this is where you actually get those controls. So command 
minus is zooming out or going to the left on this menu here. And then command plus is the same as going to the right here, where we're actually zooming in really close on the timeline. And if you look up at the little time code marks at the top of the timeline here, you'll see that we are much closer right now. This is 12 minutes and 30 seconds. This is 12 minutes and 35 seconds. And this is taking up a much greater portion uh, because we're so far zoomed in. And I can zoom in even closer. If you zoom all the way in, you're actually seeing entire frames. So this is 12 minutes, 25 seconds, and 12 frames. And if I go over here, here's 13 frames. Right now, we are so zoomed in, it's very rare you'd actually want to be this close to your project. So I can use the Appearance menu, or I could just do Command and Minus. I'm going to do Command Minus a couple times to zoom out. And notice now 12 minutes 25 seconds is right here. And over here is 12 minutes and 26 seconds. So we're still very close, but this entire portion here represents uh, one second of, of our video. But that's why you might want to use the zoom out or zoom in slider there, or just use command plus and minus to zoom in and out of your timeline. When we get more familiar with editing, the more tools you learn about, the easier it is to understand why you'd want to go in close and further away. Now, instead of using this little slider, Final Cut does include a bunch of tools all the way over here on the left side. This entire time, we've been using the arrow tool or the select tool. Uh, the shortcut is A to get to that tool. But there is a zoom tool, which you can use the Z shortcut to get to. And the zoom tool is another way to zoom in or zoom out. So instead of using Command Plus or Minus, you might want to zoom in just on this area of the clip. So using the Zoom tool, I'm just clicking and dragging across that part of the clip, and it zooms into, sorry, that portion of the timeline, zooms into that portion. If we want to zoom out, I'll just hold the Option key on my keyboard, and it might be a little hard to see, but inside the magnifying glass, instead of a plus, it's changing to a minus. And I could click and drag to zoom out of an area, uh, but otherwise I'm just going to click a couple times to zoom out. So this is really great when you have a really complex timeline, and instead of just a couple minutes, this might represent, like actually right now it represents about 15 minutes of video. If I know I just want to zoom into this clip that's right in here, I click and drag around it, and now I'm seeing that one little clip that was, that was in there zooming in much, much closer. So that's the zoom tool, which changes this first uh, little slider here. I'm gonna, gonna skip down to this other slider, which this is actually the clip height. So before we were zooming in and zooming out, which is kind of stretching or squishing the video uh, by doing this. This one is how tall these clips are. So now if I drag them to the right, it makes them much taller. Drag them to the left, they're much smaller. Now a benefit to having tall clips is you can see all those thumbnails much easier. And a benefit to them being smaller is if you have a bunch of layers of video, you can see all of those. In audio, it's much easier to see those. So for now, when we're newer to editing, and even most of the time, I like to have a little bit larger clips. So I usually drag this a little bit further to the right there. Now what that also lets us do is use these buttons in the middle to change the display options for these clips. This one on the right, we'll just start with this one. This one actually shrinks them all down, so it's ignoring the clip height and just making them really, really, really small uh, little clips there. So it's rare that you'll want to necessarily do that. A lot of people and a lot of editors like to see the visual feedback. That's one of the main reasons to use Final Cut. So next to it, we have this option that shows just video and thumbnails, and that's it. So you see our video clip, we don't see all the waveforms at the bottom of the clip. It's just showing us these nice, large thumbnails. So that looks great. And then as we move across these options here, notice the audio waveform, which are these lines at the bottom, are now back. So we can actually see the audio, which is pretty helpful. That's why I usually like this view here. The further we move over, the smaller the video thumbnails become and the larger our audio becomes all the way over to the left, which is the opposite of this, this one where we see just video. Now we're seeing just audio. So 
So the audio and video are still there. It's just visually we're seeing all the audio. And it might be kind of hard to understand why you'd want to use all these different views right now. But the further we get into the editing process, the more clear that will become. So for right now, I do like to see both the audio and the video. So I'm going to select that view option. You may have noticed our arrow here for the mouse is still the zoom tool because that's still enabled. And it's very helpful that Final Cut gives us that visual feedback to let us know which tool we're on. Because if you went down here and clicked on the timeline and expected it to move or maybe wanted to drag a clip and you couldn't, it's because that zoom tool is enabled. So make sure when you're done with the zoom tool, you hit the A key, A for arrow, and that'll move back to the arrow tool or our standard select tool. Some of the other options here in the uh, appearance menu at the bottom, we have some check marks that you can enable or disable, things like your angles, your clip roll names. Notice in the names here, we're seeing video, dialogue one, and the name. You can enable or disable these based on what you want to see. For now, I'm just going to keep clip names as the enabled option there. The last tool I want to mention in this video is the hand tool. So we've used the select tool, and we know that's the primary tool that you're always going to return to. And we've also seen the zoom tool, which is the ability to zoom in or zoom out of a project. But then we have this one that's the hand tool. So if you are, still have the select tool enabled and you click and drag, you'll notice we're not moving at all on the timeline. But the hand tool actually allows you to navigate the timeline. So you can click and drag across the timeline now. And you'll we'll, we'll notice we're scrubbing across the timeline. We're kind of moving left or right. So the hand tool allows you to move around the timeline, clicking anywhere you want and not having to worry about messing up the visuals or the placement of any of these clips. I'm going to use the shortcut Shift Z, which fits the entire project in our view here. And if I click and drag, you'll notice the hand tool doesn't do too much, but it allows me to navigate to the end here if I want to. When you have a very large number of clips on your project as you start to edit, it can be helpful to use the hand tool to move around instead of going up and maybe navigating with the playhead or scrolling with your mouse or trackpad. The hand tool can be very useful. The last tip I'll leave you with in this video is how to switch quickly between the tools. So in some cases, you may want to zoom into a specific section of a, of a project, which you could hit the Z key to bring up your magnifying glass, and then you'll click and drag across a portion of the project to zoom in. And then when you're done zooming, you'd hit the A key to switch back to the Select tool. However, I'm going to use Shift Z to zoom back out. Another way to do this is to press and hold the Z key on your keyboard. If I press and hold the Z key, what happens is the zoom tool becomes active. I can click and drag across a, uh, across a portion that I want to zoom into. See this area here. And then when I let go of the Z key, it switches back to the Select tool. So anytime you want to use it, one of these tools, you can temporarily enable the tool by holding the letter that's associated with that tool. So as an example, I might want to quickly navigate to the right on my timeline. I want to go further down in time. So I could hit the H key to enable the hand tool. I'll click and drag across the timeline here a couple times to start navigating to the right. And then when I let go of the hand tool, the H key, it switches from the hand tool back to the select tool. And then I'm able to continue. Maybe I'm doing some editing or some other options here. I can do that. And then I can use the hand tool again temporarily just by pressing H to navigate a little bit further down. And when I let go of H, it switches back to the select tool. So don't hesitate to temporarily enable a tool by holding down the shortcut key for that tool. And then when you let go, it'll always switch you back to whatever tool you previously had selected. In our case, it was the select tool or that arrow. So that's what got switched back to.